Benjamin Britten. I'm a fan of his music, but I also wanted to not be entirely reverent, I suppose. The piece I'm doing uses the melodic theme from the C interlude in Peter Grimes. The sort of quintessential Britain theme, the beautiful sea and the dawn. But that's mixed with an old Suffolk folk song. Suffolk folk music, you know, genuine traditional music, field recordings made in the 1950s among the, the farm labourers and the fishermen as well. What you get from it is the experience of these people. You know, there's nothing sort of anodyne about it. There's nothing pretty. It's just straightforward singing. But it comes from the heart and, and sort of stays there. Although life was incredibly hard for people, and they were poor, and they were despised, and they were exploited, yet a great many of them loved their lives, you know, they loved the countryside, and were able to sort of set that into song. When you hear a Suffolk song, you know it's from Suffolk, Perhaps it's the same way you know when you're looking at a Suffolk landscape that you know it's a Suffolk landscape. A bit of a mystery to it. Being a visual artist, you usually, everything's set. You know, you leave the, the gallery, it's fixed on a wall, literally. This is just dead and flowing back and forth for however long until the end point of the performance. I thought I'd have to have a direct response from myself, and that isn't how I normally work. It always comes from a secondary source that then I respond to or change. The most visited spot in this part of the world is Maggie Hamlin's sculpture on the beach here. There's hundreds of thousands of photographs that people have taken of that online on Flickr. I didn't want to focus on Maggie Hamlin's work but I liked the accidental capturing of things around that, the sculpture. So I focused on the sky within each one of them. So I took a hundred fairly random photographs of her sculpture and then focused on a little element of that. And then built a single image made up of the hundred images. Like a, a tree rings as it grows. In 2003, with troops embarking on their questionable endeavor in Iraq, Suffolk-born artist Maggie Hamblin is commissioned to create a piece commemorating Britain's afternoon walks on the wet and dazzling strand, raising a four-meter-high construction, intersecting broken scallop shells in stainless steel with negative space letters punched through all along the upper edge in a spine-tingling quotation drawn from Peter Grimes. I hear the voices that will not be drowned. A different kind of borderland, perhaps a borderland in the William Hope Hodgson sense, a borderland between the world of rationality and reality and something else. I mean, we have the witch panics 
of the 17th century with Matthew Hopkins being in the area and uh, hanging seven women. Something occurs in late December 1980 in nearby Rendlesham Forest. Lights are seen and servicemen from two US controlled air bases in the area are sent out to investigate. They find a conical and glowing object floating in a yellow mist suspended several feet above the ground and just beneath a luminescent halo pulsing red and blue. They touch its warmish surface and make notes of the peculiar symbols and signs inscribed thereon before it flies away and pulls the theorists, apologists, skeptics and occultists into the vacuum left behind it. Now, whether any of this stuff is real or not is unimportant, but it does suggest that in the local imagination, perhaps, that there is um, a very welcoming spot for this kind of material. It's, it's, it's saying something about the old bra of the mind. This peculiar meeting of the minds at Oldborough tonight. I think that possibly all of us, performers and audience alike, have an unusual experience in store.